I want you to know something about those steps. There is such a thing of knowing God's will, and there is a deeper thing of dealing with God, knowing God, who He is. And knowing who God is, I only find out when I do it sometimes a little bit wrong. And no, but nobody does always right. And I don't mean you have to do in some atomic explosion wheel, but I mean everybody on his level could do better, right? Question is, how does God react to me? I want you to know something very, very deep. There is a level of knowing God's will. There is a level of just knowing God himself, how he deals with me. It's a deeper kind of knowing. Because I know exactly what you want, but I may not know the inside of you. When you're Kippur, I'm concerned only with God's will. Because right? I didn't do God's will, so I'm asking him. He <coughs> forgives me. It's a very high level, but it's not that high. On Purim, I read the whole Megillah. You know what it means? Suddenly, I'm on the level, I'm dealing with God. I'm dealing with him. I'm dealing with God, and I get to know him. Get to know him. Because Rab Nachman says, this is very deep, a person has to know everything that happens to me is only that God wants me to get to know him better. And whatever happens to me is only a little step to get to know God better. It means there's a high level to know God's will, but to get to know him, for the Rabbi Shem is. Because a person has to know, I'm not born here to do God's will, but I'm born to get to know him. And the deepest secret in the world is, in heaven, the Malochim, they know his will, but they never have dealings with God. Private, intimate dealings. In this world, I'm dealing with Rabbi Nishlein. So he says a person has to believe and has to know that I'm only born to deal with God. Listen to those words. This is the aside from the whole Torah. He says the greatest evil in the world is evil tells you that whatever happens to you is meaningless. Get it over, get it under with, but it's meaningless. Everybody knows that Asher Kolcha Baderach, the Melch says, the Molech comes to Loshen Mikre. The greatest evil is when people say, it just happened. That's the utmost of evil. And the holiest of holies, holiness is to know that nothing happens. Everything, everything is a tremendous plan. And therefore, if you really know that everything has a, a reason, then naturally, then, then you know what's most important, what's not so important. Right? If you're on that level, then you cannot say, I'm born here to make a few rubles. Right? I mean, I'm, I'm mamish here in this world to get to know, to know God better. One thing. Second thing, he says something very deep. A person has to be aware of two things. The first thing is to push too hard forward, don't push too hard backward. Push forward means is it if the time of redemption isn't here yet. You're not ready yet for complete salvation. You're not ready yet to be on the highest level. Don't push it. Hapnished. Don't push it. God knows you want to be a high tzaddik. Chapnished. Wait. Don't push forward. Don't push backward is when the great moment comes and God wants to make a tzaddik out of you, don't push backwards. Just listen, I'm not ready yet. You know, I want to wait. I don't think I'm ready yet. You know, imagine someone comes to you and says, listen, you want to learn a little bit? Say, no, I'm not ready yet for learning. What do you know what God is in store for you, what God wants to teach you, right? So wh what are you pushing backward? Then imagine you want to learn so badly, nobody said to teach you. Don't push forward. It's okay, you know, tomorrow. So what do you need for this? To reach that level, you need what the Rama calls to me is wholeness. Wholeness means to know exactly, you know, how hard it is. On one hand, I have to be always ready to open my gates, jump in. On the other hand, I've always to be ready to wait. 
On one hand, I'm waiting. On the other hand, I can't wait. This is the deepest secret of life, you know, to know exactly when to wait, when not to wait. And actually, on, on, on the deepest level, the holiness of, of Eden is that we have the strength to wait, and also we know exactly when not to wait, which is the deepest secret of life. I'll tell you something very deep. Between people also, it's a very strong thing. Sometimes someone does you wrong. So you want to jump up and tell them, wait, now is not the time. And again, sometimes someone does you wrong and you have no right not to tell. You have no right to wait. You got to tell them on the spot. With children, it's even deeper. Because when you want to tell children what they did wrong, it has to be a very high minute. Because if you tell them, has to show them, you knock them off, you knock them off. You have to tell them in such a way that you don't knock them off. You know, when you tell children what they did wrong, it's not to rebuke them about the past, it's just to give them strength not to do it again, right? It's an injection, right? You know, if someone gives me injection, I hate to be prost, but there are certain places where you put the injection, right? Someone puts injection in, in my socks and my shoes and my shirt and says, listen, you wear the shirt, let me put the injection in there. That's very sweet, but it doesn't have to be, you know, in my body, inside, right? You have to know exactly where to make the injection, how to make the injection, you know, without hurting. So this is Tmimis. But the truth is, in order to know this secret, absolutely there's no way, there's no yellow pages, there's no schedule to tell you. The only thing is you can daven, Mamash, you have to daven and pray so hard, please, Rabbi Shlalem. Let me do it at the right time. Let me not push forward, and let me not, not push backward. It's the deepest depth there is, you know. I want you to know something else. This is from Rabzodek Akoin. Rabzodek Akoin says one of the deepest secrets of life is when you have to go all the way, when to go step by step. It's very, very deep. Sometimes there's a great opening, and at this moment, Mama should have to go all the way. What? You remember we're learning it last year, yeah. So, so he says like this. When the opening comes from heaven, go all the way. The gates of heaven open, go all the way. When you work on yourself, and, and you open the gates and go slow. Say something very deep between people, it's so strong, you know. You know? I tell you, sometimes, let's say, Bokshem, now I'm married, but you know, let's say, before I was married. You know, sometimes you meet a girl and you like her. So you think, Mamish, you know, maybe I should marry her, right? So you want to walk up to her and say, listen, I want to marry you. But it wasn't called for, right? Go step by step, you know. Sometimes you meet a girl and you got a mamish proposed to her right on the spot, right? It's a very deep thing, you know. Most of the time we do it wrong, you know. The girl we should propose to, we says, listen, I got to get to know her, you know, this new thing now. We have to get to know each other. But sugar, or you get married or not, right? And sometimes it's really, you got to get to know each other, right? Uh -huh. L'chaim, l'chaim. M'schaim, it's just M'schaim, yeah, it's very strong. Hey, at least you remembered, Mamish. Thank you for remembering it. This is also very strong to remember. We have to know one thing that we are really not part of this world in a very strange way. The way of Rama Vinon, and so, can you make it a little bit louder? Just a tiny bit, so I won't have, just a little bit, because I have to strain my voice, and I wish I wouldn't have to. Just a tiny bit. Hello. Okay. You know, the way God created Abraham and Sora, the Gemara says, not only they were not able to have children, they were mamish not able to have children, right? You know? Mamish, they're completely out of it. And for them to have children was the greatest miracle in the world. So there's already one miracle, right? Then Yitzhak was lying on the altar, and he was Mamish supposed 
to, to die. And another miracle happened, he stayed alive. Okay, Yitzhak is already okay. Yitzhak again shouldn't have children, has shown. And Rivke was not supposed to have children on a natural way. And everything is crazy, right? Because we are really not part of this world. Becoming uh, the life you receive is from such a high place. You know, it says in Chesidus, Esther comes from the word hidden, right? You know, everything in this world, life is open. But Esther, the way we Yiddalach live, come from such a hidden place, that in this world you can't even see it, doesn't fit in even, right? comes from an absolutely hidden place. <coughs> Can you imagine Yiddalach supposed to be killed? How come they're still there? From another place, right? That means I don't receive life from, from the same place without hurting anybody's feelings. I'm not receiving life from the same place the whole world receives life. I'm sure the world also receives life from a high place. But it's not where I'm getting my life from. Different kind of grocery store, right? Different kind of life. And again, a Yidl has to know one thing. If I study Torah, I also, it's not that I study, I know more than you. When you study Torah, again, your life level is from another place, right? And the more you learn, the not you know more. The more Shabbos I keep, the more mitzvahs I do, the more I'm into it. It's not I'm doing more or less. You see the whole thing, like doing more, you get to paradise, you do less, you get to hell. This is all stupid talk, this is not what it's at. The question is, where, is, where do you receive your life, right? Where do you where do you go where do you go live shopping? Ask them in a Torah, you know. Yeah, that's the one thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <coughs> What's going on here? This is where I'm laughing a few sweet things here. <coughs> what? <coughs> No, no, they don't say the same for Alekutim. The Sefer Hamidot. They're the Kurven Sefer Hamidot, yes. Let's have Kurven.